Do you want to learn these seven ways that top producing real estate agents build rapport with clients? Today, you're going to learn seven simple techniques that you can start using right away to build rapport with prospects, buyers, sellers, or anybody for that matter. My name is Michael Montgomery, and I'm with Rev Real Estate School. What we do is we help real estate agents through systems, marketing, and sales skills build a bigger pipeline so they never have to worry where their next deal is coming from and so that they can have a life. So let's discuss what the seven techniques that you can start using and that top producing real estate agents use in order to build rapport with their clients. First and probably the most important is a two-step process. And this is really just a mental trick that you can use, focusing on curiosity, and empathy. So if we stay curious as salespeople, as real estate agents, if we are truly curious as to what's motivating this person, why do they want to move? What's drawing them towards this neighborhood? And then we stay very empathetic to them, then rapport will naturally be built. So how do we build curiosity and empathy? Well, curiosity truly comes from preparation and having questions ready to go so that we are able to dig deep into what is motivating them to want to move. And empathy comes from understanding that this is going to be a challenging transaction. There's a lot of thoughts going through their minds. They're wondering, how does this all work? What do I have to pay? What can I afford? What do I have to pay my realtor? And these are big questions. So we need to understand that we need to be on their side. And truly, if mentally, we just remind ourselves to remain curious and empathetic, we will naturally build rapport. Number two, if you want a quick hack in order to build rapport, and this is a strategy that we use for people that say, I don't know how to network. I go to a networking event. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to connect with people. There's really only a couple things you need to do in order to truly be liked by the other party. And it is their name and it is questions. So if we use their name when we are talking to them and we are asking a continuous set of questions while digging deeper, which we're going to get into next, just by way of that, we will form a bond with this person. And so we talk about this all the time when we're talking about networking. We discuss the fact that using their name and using questions can be a great way to actually form a bond. And that is also how we're building rapport. Now, what type of questions are we asking and how do we actually dig deeper? Well, when I'm going into a presentation, I always have a list of questions. Now, in the description below, you will be able to download our questions. So if you want to have these questions so you can use them as well, feel free to do so. So one question that you will see is what prompted you to reach out to us today? Now, this is a really good rapport building question. And one thing about this question though, is they're going to very likely give us a surface answer. So they're going to say something along the lines, well, it was time to move. It was time for our family to get into a bigger house. Okay, then we have to dig deeper. To dig deeper, all we really need to do is ask a follow-up question. And there are two follow-up questions that I tend to ask. So first, it's very simple, tell me more. So they say they want to move into a bigger house, that they are ready for a bigger house. And you say, tell me more. And then from there, they're just going to continue on. The next question I'll use to dig in deeper is can you expand on that? So I want to be in XYZ area. This area is extremely important for me. Can you expand on that? And so what we're doing here is we're getting them to go beyond just the surface level. And that's where rapport is built, is beyond that surface level. Now, one word of warning when we're getting into questions. What we can do at times is we can start to think, okay, all I need to do is ask questions. So we just start to pepper the prospect with questions. Now, this is going to feel like an interrogation. This is not going to build rapport. Now, Gong, a software product that actually records Zoom calls on behalf of sales reps, conducted a very deep study into how much should the sales rep versus the prospect be talking. Now, really interesting data on this. The best performing sales reps speak 40% of the time, allowing the prospect to speak 60% of the time. Now, this to me is actually quite interesting because what this suggests is that we are not just peppering them with questions and then just sitting back. We're digging deeper and we're trying to understand where their questions are coming from. And on the other side of the coin, we are not speaking more than them. We are speaking 40% of the time. They are speaking 60% of the time. Now, a really good heuristic to keep in mind is when you are in a sales conversation, whoever is speaking the most 
tends to think the conversation went best. And so if you go into a listing presentation and you are talking the whole time, you are going to leave that presentation thinking that you hit it out of the park. The prospect on the other hand is not going to think that. So what's really important here is to understand who's ever speaking the most thinks that conversation went best. And that 60-40 relationship seems to really be the sweet spot. Now, as real estate agents, we are in a uniquely favorable position because we have conversational ammo. And some of that ammunition is location. We know where they live, or we know as a buyer where they're looking to buy. Because we know this, we can actually form rapport based on location. So what do I mean by this? So a seller is reaching out and I'm asking them questions about their home. A very easy way to build rapport, asking them how they like the neighborhood. I haven't seen the interior of their home, so I can't build rapport around their home, but I do know where they live. I do know their community. I know the parks, the shops, the landmarks. And so I can bring that up and I can say, hey, do you spend a lot of time at the park? Have you been to XYZ coffee shop? And this is a great way to build rapport. So as real estate agents, we actually already have what we need in order to start building rapport. Next, we have the topic of construction and design. So once I'm actually in the home, these can be two great ways to build rapport. Having a basic understanding of construction and design allows us to bond. So I can explain how I love their hardwood floors, how I think that their brand of appliances are great. And when it comes to design trends, I can say that XYZ is a current design trend. Now, I don't have to know everything about construction and design. Not at all. Instead, I just need a basic understanding of these things so that I'm able to actually form a bond with these people. Next, we have an amazing technique. And this technique is called repeat and rephrase. So what this technique does is it allows your prospect to feel heard. And so how it works is like this. They're going to explain something to you and then you are going to repeat what they said, but in a different way. This works actually really well when dealing with buyers. So the buyer says they're looking for a 1500 square foot bungalow in a certain community with four bedrooms near this school and they also wanna be near green space. And so I'm not going to say that verbatim back to them, but I'm going to say something like this. So it sounds like you are looking for a one story home, we're aiming for three bedrooms, really important to be around this school and green space is key. So I'm not saying exactly what they said. I'm repeating it though, and I'm rephrasing it. And so you'll notice what I said there is, it sounds like, or from my understanding, these are different ways that we can then have them understand that we just heard what they said. This causes an instant bond to be formed. They feel heard. And oftentimes in real estate, clients do tend to think that real estate agents may be out for their own interests. And because of that, we need to fight against that because we do not do that. We want to be on the same team as them. We need to ensure that they feel heard. And by using this repeat and rephrase technique, you will form rapport with them right away. Moving on to number six, and you may have heard this one before, but it's matching their vocal tonality. So if they're a fast talker, we're going to speak fast. If they're slow and quiet, we're going to be slow and quiet. Now here's the most challenging thing with this, in my opinion. I find this extremely hard to be thinking about, okay, I need to match this person's vocal tone. When I'm in a conversation, I'm focused on what they're saying. I'm taking down notes. I'm not going to try and remember to maintain a certain vocal tone and speed and cadence. So a really great trick is simply to picture the person as your best friend. And psychology is such an interesting thing. Naturally, we are going to start to match their rhythm. We're going to match their tone and match their cadence. So this is a strategy I use all the time, especially when it's somebody I don't know. If I'm calling a lead, I'm picturing that person on the other line as my best friend. And same thing goes when I'm in a presentation. I'm picturing that person as my best friend. Getting back to the first thing, I will also become more empathetic and more curious just naturally when I'm picturing them as my best friend. This is a really great technique. Finally, we have vulnerability and courage. We can't just sit there and listen. We also have to contribute to the conversation. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we have to have a perspective and we have to be willing to show our true colors as well. So if we're discussing the park down the street or we're discussing a school, we can then bring up a personal story that we have or a connection that we have, or maybe we bring our dog to that park or we used to bring our dog to that park. That's a basic example, but showing a level of vulnerability can go even further. 
So let's say that we're talking to a seller and the seller is going through some challenges that they're worried about when they think about selling their home. Well, we can say, you know, I sold my own home two years ago. Let me walk you through some of the challenges that I dealt with and I am a real estate agent. So what we're doing here is we are creating mutual ground. Now, one bit of resistance that I oftentimes hear is I find it hard to create mutual ground because I don't think I'm interesting. First off, as soon as I hear that, I challenge it. Typically, we're just inhibited. Inside of our minds, we want to stop ourselves because we think, ah, so-and-so doesn't care what I think or what I've done. And in fact, that is not true. We have very interesting lives. But if you still say, I do not have an interesting life because all I do is I watch and do the exact same things, then what I'd suggest is this. You need to start doing more things. You need to get out with friends more. You need to watch different shows. You need to read different materials. You need to listen to different podcasts. You need to take different routes home. You need to show different styles of properties. And the more that we just expand what we have exposure to in the world, then from there, we're going to be able to form mutual relationships and mutual bonds with people over similar topics. So the first thing to understand here is don't feel inhibited. Don't feel like you have to second guess and have to be in your own head when it comes to showing vulnerability and creating a connection. This is how rapport is built. Secondly, ensure that you are experiencing the world because the more that we experience, the easier it is to form these mutual connections. Thanks for listening to this episode. My name is Michael Montgomery. Feel free to drop in the comments if you have any questions whatsoever, and we'll see you in the next lesson.